Welcome back to another Sebastian story. is Alex and this is my sweet boy Sebastian. We're back again telling his story and actually wanted to this week talk about the history of Connie Corso. I think a lot of people don't actually realize that this is an ancient breed. Uh, they've been around for centuries and centuries. Um, it is understood that they were actually uh, uh, descended of the uh, Molossian or Molosser breed out of Greece and during the uh, uh, Roman Empire they were brought home to Italy uh, within a very short amount of time, naturalized to be Cane Corso Italiano. It is understood that they're a bit smaller and a little bit more, have a bit more finesse in their step than uh, the Molossers, which were a slightly larger breed of dog. I mean, they, they were war dogs, and uh, I think that's part of the reason why uh, the Romans brought them home, was that it was a, uh, uh, <laughs> the loyalty of this animal knows no, out, no ends. Um, and so I'm sure that was a uh, perfect choice for uh, trying to uh, initiate conquest of all of Europe and <laughs> everywhere else. So uh, this sweet boy has that kind of lineage in him. And uh, of course, at the uh, during the fifth century, once the Roman Empire fell, these dogs were out of a job, and they came home and became farm dogs and general laborers. And uh, their their natural instincts for protection were perfect on the farm. Uh, you want to, you know, protect your livestock and everything, and these big old flappy pappies, as, as sweet as he can be, uh, he's certainly capable uh, of uh, needing to be a bit more aggressive if he needs to, and if he feels his family is being threatened, or in in context, uh, the livestock, his, 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 the, uh, the animals under his care. So after the Roman Empire, of course, these pappies needed uh, a new job. And, uh, they became home to be farm dogs, and uh, they apparently did a really spectacular job. And I think the Italians really held them close and highly regarded and highly protected. Um, and not wanting to uh, share these pappies abroad, but uh, chickens and sheep and everybody that uh, lived underneath them that uh, had them for protection. I, uh, I can only imagine how safe they felt, because I know how safe we feel having this guy around. He... Uh, he reacts pretty instantaneously to anything that he considers a threat, and I've truly never seen uh, another animal like this. It's, it is remarkable, and I think that's something that's important to point out. Uh, a lot of people uh, get fascinated by the breed, and you know, especially if they, they are thinking that they need some sort of guard dog uh, in their life. Uh, Connie Corso is a true investment in your time and your love. There is a lot of training and a lot of patience required to make sure that this animal stays safe uh, and knows its own boundaries. And of course, they naturally fall in place with their own family when they when they know love and when they know who's caring for them and of course feeding them. Uh, they will guard that family. And you know, just personally, when this poor sweet guy came home. Um, it was probably within the first month or two, and my dad had come over for a visit, and on the way out, you know, gave each other a hug and patted me on the back. This guy shot up, and he was growling, and his ears went flat, and my dad was, I just saw my eyes flat, my life flash before my eyes. Um, it, he, we, we had never experienced an animal that reacts so quickly and so powerfully uh, in our time before. And we think it's really an amazing uh, attribute of these animals and something to be cherished, but also something to be understood and respected, uh, especially for any potential uh, Cani Corso lovers out there, the uh, Cani Corso Italiano Amorati. Uh, it's actually an organiza organization, excuse me. Um, and it's all about the Cani Corso lovers. That's the translation. Um, and that's absolutely what I am, is a lover. I don't particularly care to say that I am his owner. Um, I, I don't really like that uh, phrase. I think we should be able to move on as humans of needing to feel ownership over another living being. Um, and this sweet boy who needed a home, he had an injured paw that we've been working to rehabilitate, and uh, he just wants to have a great old life, and we're trying to do everything we can to help ensure it. And once we got into the uh, 20th century, it was actually starting to uh, see these dogs brought more uh, into more places around the world. And I uh, believe it was actually a Neapolitan Mastiff breeder that discovered um, Connie Corso and said, hey, I need to bring some of these puppies back. And 
Uh, I guess he did, and uh, uh, you can tell that there is a big difference with um, the number of Conti Corsos out there, because they, of course, get crossbred with other breeds. Um, the, uh, the American Kennel Club, the AKC, lists uh, the maximum weight as, I believe, about 110 pounds. And so when you see Conti Corso that uh, are much larger, you know, 120, 150 pounds, these are typically dogs that have been bred uh, crossbred with Neapolitan Mastiffs, uh, who are also descended of the Molosser just more recently. Connie Corso is the older, more ancient breed uh, between the two of them. Um, and while Neapolitans are wonderful, lovely animals, uh, they are not nearly as uh, athletic as uh, true Connie Corso. And at likewise, you can also see some Connie Corso that are a little bit smaller and often were crossbred with boxers. Um, and it's just, you know, various attributes that breeders were trying to either gain or take out of the breed. And so, of course, now in the 21st century, you will see a lot of mixes. We don't really know Sebastian's exact lineage. He is a rescue. Um, he was listed as a Connie Corso mix. I couldn't tell you what he's mixed with because I don't see it myself. Um, but uh, he's a big, sweet pappy that needed a home. But he has... He has all of the loyalty and commitment and determination uh, that I come to understand of the breed, Connie Corso. Um, it's, it's remarkable in, you know, they came home to be farm dogs, and of course I can only imagine how safe, you know, the chickens and sheep and all the animals that were under their care and, and watchful eye felt. Because uh, I know we certainly sleep great knowing that we have this guy around. And that's, you know, it was never our objective. We weren't looking for a guard dog, but we got one. <laughs> we just wanted to rescue a sweet boy that needed a home. And uh, we've been able to uh, cultivate him into, you know, just this big loving animal that just wants to do nothing but appease us and make us happy and, you know, just living his life is all we were really expecting from him. So it's been a wonderful, wonderful relationship with this animal. But uh, I think it's important to try and share some of this knowledge out there. I know a lot of people are looking for guard dogs and uh, things of that nature. And uh, this is a very highly intelligent breed. Um, I mean, he's, he's barely two and a half years old here, and I can't tell you how much of the English language he already understands. Of course, I'm trying to work on my Italian, too. <laughs> Maybe he'll understand me even better then. I don't know. Because I've just never encountered such a loving and determined animal to love. Um, it's, it's absolutely remarkable, and it's something that should be cherished and preserved. Um, and I can see, certainly, just like Dobermans, just like pit bulls, these are animals that a lot of people want and think, oh, it'll be great having this animal around, but there's a huge amount of responsibility on you, the human, to ensure that this animal can stay safe and not harm anyone uh, out there, especially a passerby, you know, th that sort of thing. You don't want an overly aggressive animal, and I think it's unfortunate that um, a lot of these dogs end up homeless, and I think shelters are quick to put uh, these more aggressive breeds down. And uh, I think that's... We never set out to be one specific uh, rescuer of any specific breed, but uh, in, in learning about Connie Corso and learning about how this guy is, um, we, we are feeling a bit of a, a need to at least share some knowledge and uh, possibly uh, rescue some more Corsos in the future because uh, they are a huge responsibility. And I can imagine a lot of people simply not understand that when they uh, would go and pick up one of these animals. And uh, they try to give it their best, but um, it's, it's practically a full-time job trying to take care of these guys because you have to exercise them. You have to get all of this energy out every single day. And... Um, we love doing it, but um, we also want to make sure that uh, all these pappies get to have the opportunity to live out their lives uh, to the fullest. And it's our hope that by sharing more of this knowledge and information that we can help people make better informed decisions uh, on the animal that they bring in. Because certainly you see this big, strong, muscular dog and you go, wow, that's beautiful. We need to get one of those. Uh, they are a full-time responsibility, uh, through and through. You have to get all of this energy out of this animal every single day. It is not optional. He does not give you the option. <laughs> he, he wants to play with the exception of a rainy day.
Uh, it's the only thing he. It's the only thing he seems to not like is a rainy day. Um, but uh, uh, we want to make sure that uh, all those sweet pappies out there in the world get to live the great lives that they deserve, and want to make sure that uh, people that think they would like to be their caretaker uh, are making the correct decision for themselves as well. Um, certainly don't want you to make the mistake of maybe we needed a Cocker Spaniel, but we went for a Connie Corso instead, and wow, our house is gone. <laughs> well, all our furniture is destroyed, and we don't understand why. And oh, well, you had a Connie Corso that was young and was still teething, because this dog has taken over two years now to c continue. He's still continuing teething. He's got some gaps in still that haven't filled in yet. Um, and we always have to make sure he's got something to chew on and be proactive with that. And uh, we had done a video on beef bones for that reason. Of, It's one of the best toys. It's a natural toy for them to chew on. But uh, it, it also does not risk causing any obstructions or anything like that uh, after you've boiled it in water. Uh, it softens the bone and allows it to be more easily digested and, of course, the marrow as well. But we want to make sure that the world is a, a better place for sweet babbies like Sebastian and, of course, better for the people, too, because certainly don't want you to be uh, uh, thinking you're going to get the dog of your dreams when you may simply just not have the time uh, to be able to commit to the animal. It is a full-time investment. Um, that's not financially. That is time. You, you have to dedicate your life with this breed. And in exchange, I mean, you have a, a dog and an animal that is as loyal as anyone or anything I have ever witnessed. It is truly remarkable, and it's something to be cherished and preserved. He's the sweetest thing I could have ever hoped for, and uh, we actually would like to try and rescue some more in the future. Because a lot of these dogs, they just they end up without homes for one reason or another. But I think most often, just like Dobermans, just like pit bulls. Uh, people don't quite understand what they're getting themselves into, and as these breeds can tend to be uh, very heavily abused by people, turning them very aggressive, shelters are not able to care for those animals, and they're usually the first ones to get put down. And it's a sad reality that uh, this beautiful, majestic animal often suffers that fate as a result of humans. And that's where I really hope that spreading this knowledge and sharing these stories and how wonderful these guys really can be, or these gals can be, um, and hope help, help people make uh, better informed decisions and have the, uh, the most wonderful life with their sweet pappies themselves, and everybody's happy. Wouldn't that be wonderful? As always, thank you so very much for watching. We're having a great time telling these stories, and we'll be back again soon with more. Thanks again.